Genesis chapter number 6 tonight. Uh, we'll read the first few verses and pray and give you the thought God has upon our hearts. If you got it, say amen. amen. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man for he that is also his flesh yet his days shall be in a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And let me pause and say this. God still sees it. Uh, it, it all because it's in the Old Testament don't mean, mean in 2020 that God's got a blind eye. But let me say this. Everything we hide and you hide and I hide, God's taking a record. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every, look at this, an imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face to the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. And what a sad line here, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But man, we could stop there and it would be a sad tragedy. But I'm very thankful for verse number 8. But Noah found grace I feel a preaching right there but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord Father I love you tonight Lord I stand where no man can stand alone Lord I will be completely honest with you you know my heart Lord I'm up here shaking I'm so nervous tonight Lord I, I take it serious God I take it serious God what you asked us to preach tonight Lord I'm scared I'm nervous Lord, I pray you'll calm me down. God, give me boldness. God, give me liberty. Lord, I love these people. Been a dear friend to my dad in the ministry. Or no doubt, many a times, dad probably would have given up if it had not been for Emmanuel Baptist Church being a friend. God, I pray you'll bless this place. Lord, I, I know what it's here for tonight. But Lord, I want to thank you for all these kids and these teenagers being here on a Saturday night inside the house of God. Lord, I pray for every pastor, every, every home that's representing God that you will bless. No doubt under the sound of my voice, Father, there's going to be people here tonight that, God, that they do not know you. I pray they'll walk out different. But, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, as I've seen over three years, Lord, there's kids that come to church and their parents don't care at all about the things of God. Lord, but what I know if that kid give the heart to Jesus, let mom and daddy see a difference in their life. There's absolutely no telling what would happen up here in Florence, Kentucky. It's some kids. God, just get right with you. Dear God, start a revival. God, that man can't snuff out and make the devil mad. Dear God, if anything gets accomplished, it'll be 0% man, 100% God. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. We find here, by way of introduction quickly, we find that Noah was a pure man. You say, Jeff, how do you know that? Look with me there in the verse number 3. And the Lord said, look at verse number 7, And the Lord said, you know who he was carrying on conversation with? It was Brother Noah. I'm not too smart, but the Bible does say, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You won't hear this a lot, but I still believe in being pure for God. Somebody say amen. amen. Being youth pastor over there a while, there's one thing that I have learned in kids and in adults is that purity is a thing of the past. Nobody believes in it no more. A girl will just go sell her body and just to make one night stand and have a good time. You say, Jeff, man, that's just the, that don't happen. Listen, down there where I'm from, I, I, sadly, under my ministry, I've seen two girls under the ages of 16 years old get pregnant and give birth to a little kid. I still believe it is all right to be pure in 2020. The world says no. The schools say no. And can I say it's still all right, kids, to live your life for God. Say amen right there. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith in purity. You know what the word purity means? It means to be straightforward are unaffected. 
I'll say this to my little nieces. I'll talk about them a lot. I love them. I, I don't have, I'm not married. don't have no family. But what you do is you take them nieces and nephews and you bring them out, take them to Walmart. You spool them all day long, give them Mountain Dew and Reese cups, and then you send them right back home. Praise God. My, my two sisters don't like me sometimes. My little niece come home, Harper, the other day. She come to the house. That's that little girl y'all prayed for, Harper. She's now six years old. I mean, we bought that onesie and put it. She is six years old. Man, Brother Lawrence, she, she come home the other day and her teacher was talking about two men and two women. And she's in the first grade. Can I say this? If the church does not take a stand now, it's going to be too late. We've kept our mouths shut for so long. We've been so quiet about it. Don't want to make nobody mad. Don't want to upset the apple cart. But can I say, kids, it's, it's all right and still godly for a man to be with a woman. Somebody say amen. Be pure, man. Be, be different. I'll never forget in my Sunday school class, you can walk there to this very minute. But over there in the teenage class of Victor Baptist Church, I'm a picture guy. I love seeing stuff and I remember it. And Denny and Kathy's Sunday school class, there is a picture of two penguins. Uh, probably some of the coolest little animals in the world. You go to the Georgia Aquarium, you get to stick your head right in the middle of them penguin. They flying by going left and right. But one of those penguins has on some uh, swimming trunks and some sunglasses and a beach ball. You know what the sign right above that says? Dare to be different. It's okay to stick out. Yeah. We was walking out of the motel, had my Bibles in my hand, my suit. I know I stuck out, but you know I'm proud of that. Yeah. I want to be pure. I want to be a godly man. Yeah. Not only was Noah a pure man, Noah was a people man. You'll find that there, verse number 9 and 10. These are the generations of Noah. Everybody, his family wanted to be around him. Let me rush through this and say not only was Noah a, a, a pure man, a people man. Notice there in verse number 22 of Genesis chapter number 6. The first three words, thus did Noah. Kids, I'm going to take a time out on you and I'm going to hammer these adults right fast. Is that all right? But I promise I'm coming back. I promise I am. Let me say this right here. Noah was a persuaded man. You got to take in your mind that brother Noah got a, got a knock at his heart's door, preacher, and God is sitting here telling this man out of nowhere, you're about to build an ark. You're about to take some gopher wood. Man, that, that thing, yes, immaculate, huge. Could you imagine God laying that building plan on us today? Wow. I dare say some of us look at that and say, well, God, I don't got enough time for that. Mm, yeah, God, you know, my schedule's pretty busy. I don't see here what time after all the instructions God gave Noah. Verse 14 down through 21, he told him how to, not one time, Brother Lawrence, did God say, hey, no, no, God, I don't have no time for this. Can I say this? You better make time for God. I know that's not popular tonight. Sometimes my mama used to give me a robot tuss and I didn't like it. But you know what did it? It helped what my ailment was. Can I say we need some persuaded people in 2020? No, it was a persuaded man. Man, one man said this. Don't obey God to get things. Obey God to get God. Okay, God, if, if you'll answer this prayer, God, if you'll let my mom or my dad get out of the hospital, if you'll, if you'll let those things happen, God, then I'll do what you ask me to do. Here should be, God, whatever you want, long as I get you, that's all that matters. Man, D.L. Moody said this, there will be no peace in any soul until it is willing to obey the voice of God. He was a persuaded man. Not only that, he was a preaching man. Yeah. No, it was a preaching man. You'll find in 2 Peter chapter number 2, verse number 5, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Yeah. Let me say this tonight. If you was to cut your TV on in South Carolina, you can turn to channel 6, and it's, it's supposed to be a godly network. It's supposed to be people that preach uh, man, if you want a bunch of kicks and giggles, you can probably go look at that and, man, just laugh your head off. Because the stuff they got ain't what I got. And, man, they, they got them preachers on there say, you know, man, if you'll just sow a seed, if you'll just sow a seed of 50 bucks, God give you back 10,000. Praise God. No wonder why they're flying around in jets and having a good time. Man, just sow a seed and, man, they'll get on there. 
Say, God loves you. Please just do right. The, the Lord of all the heavens, He's our Father. I'm sitting there, I'm like, come on. All right, he's about to kick it in. Brother Phil, he's about to get with it. And all of a sudden, just sow your seed. I'm sitting there, Jordan, I'm like, come on, man. Back in my, my, I was a class clown back in the days. I was the loudest one, I guess still am. Y'all can blame my daddy and mom on me on that. Uh, but man, listen, I don't believe for one second when Noah got the requirements from God, listen, he had to build and he had to preach. He didn't only get up there and preach. And, but you know what? He had to go grab a hammer. They didn't have Ryobi tools and Milwaukee drills. They'd get out there. You know what? He had to go work with his own hands. I don't believe for one moment. You can't tell me that tonight that you believe this, that Noah got up there on the ark and said, All right, guys. <laughs> Guess what? There's a big old water thing about to happen. And you might want to get right with God. I don't want to make none of you mad. But the judgment of God is coming. Watch out. There's, the flood's going to come. And if you're on the ark, you're going to be safe. You can't tell me for one minute Brother Noah was doing that. I believe with all my heart he was a leather-lunged man of God. As he would hammer away, I believe he said, Hey! Guess, guys, you've got to get this. The judgment of God is coming. The wrath of God is coming. There's going to come a time when you'll never have another opportunity. You better get in now. You better get in now. And I promise you there were mamas, there was daddies, there was kids that would walk by and laugh at Brother Noah. They would point at Brother Noah and think, man, you're crazy. You're wasting your time. Man, you're wasting your breath. But every morning Brother Noah got up. He knew the judgment of God was coming and he'd preach that thing hell hard that if you don't get on, on the ark you're going to be left you're going to be breathless you're going to die and all hope for your life is going to be taken away you better get in the ark I want to preach tonight with this simple thought you better get in I'm telling you tonight I'm 30 years old and man, the more the, the more I go in churches and see the, the lack of desire to see God. Man, I can I tell you, you better get in tonight. You better get in. I want you to notice one thing here in verse number three, and I probably won't get past this, but I want you to notice this right here, verse number three. And the Lord said, talking to Brother Noah, notice this thought. He is telling him, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He is saying there's coming a time when the same spirit, you go read Genesis, man, the spirit of God, when nothing was there, guess what there was? The spirit of God. I don't care what scientists tell you in school, before there was ever anything that was ever God put on the earth, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You say, Jeff, what are you talking about? Are you, what, man, what, was that some crazy thing? Listen, honey, if you get saved and there's a big old God that hops in the car with you, man, you down in the molly grubs and you don't feel like going home, brother Christian, and somebody sits in there in your lap and the Holy Ghost crawls in your lap and honey, you start wiping them tears, getting the ugly face. Can I say tonight, I'm very thankful. I don't serve a dead, beat up Muhammad God. I'm glad I don't have to rub no belly to feel a movement. Honey, I'm glad I serve a God. I'm glad I serve a real God and a faithful God and a God that will move upon the face of the earth. Kids, can I tell you tonight, God loves you so much that he sent the Spirit of God to draw you unto him. Notice this here. The same Spirit of God that Genesis 1-2 tells us about the same Spirit of God in Job 33 verse number 4 the Spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life we are here today by the Spirit of God Noah is getting a, a future glimpse of what God is telling him here's what brother Noah got Noah the same Spirit you feel will not always be here. Say, Jeff, what does that matter? What, what, what does it matter if the Spirit of God isn't around? Can I say this? The Spirit of God's 
not a ghost. It's not a boogeyman. It's different than anything you'll ever feel in your life. Jeff, why is it so important that Noah finds a place of solitude? I tell you why. Because if you do not get in on the ark, if you do not get in when God nudges your heart, you say, Jeff, what are you talking about? Those of you that are saved tonight, you know how it is. I'll never forget on a Wednesday night, August 16, 2006, my dad, around 8.30, man, we had one of them good services, y'all. Y'all know my dad now, he's kind of calmed his sermons down a little bit, cut them off a little short, praise God, somebody say amen right there. Uh, Miss Annette, he, he, on that Wednesday night, he was over here just a trucking. Have no idea what he was saying. But there was somebody over here, I was sitting about there where you are in my church. And brother, there was somebody over here doing a lot of talking in my heart. I have no idea, Jordan, what my dad was talking about. I was 16 years old. I was in a Christian school. I'm a preacher's kid. Man, if anybody has, has, has salvation, if anybody's got the Spirit of God, show sure enough a preacher's kid. So I can tell you now, that's direct opposite. Some of you PKs say amen. We're the worst in the world, praise God, till Jesus gets a hold of us. But I'll never forget, man, the Spirit of God. Man, drawing on my heart. That Tuesday night, we went to uh, Ralph Sexton. Man, he had them big tent ministries down there and he was on the racetrack. And kids, I'll never forget it. The Bible says, man, man the ark of God, the trump of God shall sound. Yep. And that night, preacher, he brought out one of the biggest rams, torn chauffeurs I've ever seen in my life. Man, he got a hold of that thing and he blew that thing and man, chills went up. Man, the Holy Ghost tore my tail up. Christian, I said, oh man, man, that's it, I'm gone. I done got left out. Conviction struck my heart. A preacher's kid that's supposed to have it. Listen, I said and did the right things. I waved my hand when I was supposed to. I said amen when the choir sung. I took up the offering. I, I tried to help, when, but there was nothing on the inside of me. And if I'd have died that Tuesday night, August 15th, I would have went straight to hell. Can I say tonight, you don't hear a lot of preaching on that. But the true fact, I'm not trying to scare nobody tonight. God, God forbid that happens. But can I say if mankind, a man, woman, boy, or girl, says no to God and God comes back, God has no other place to put you and to put you in hell. Can I say it's a scary thing if you miss God. And you have to go to hell. You say, Jeff, why are you so loud tonight? Why, why are you so, man, you, you on my nerves tonight. Maybe you need me to be the one. Can you say, Jeff, I don't like your loudness. I hate to bust your bubble tonight. But the Bible says in hell there's weeping. What's that next word? And wailing. And I promise you when we get to glory, we're not going to be sitting there, wow, this is great. Woo! Man, we're going to be at it. Praise God. I can't wait to get to heaven and see my grandma. Get to see, I'm going to be shouting the glory. Say amen. Sure. But the same Spirit of God that Tuesday night, preacher, I, I told myself I was gripping the pew, man, I was under such conviction. Brother Lawrence, I, I, I looked at my mom and dad, they were all in it, man, I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my big boy pants on. I'm going to go. And here's a thought that ran to my mind. What's them people going to think about me? What's, what's my daddy? Kids, what's, what's my daddy going to think about me? I played it good, man. I acted out just perfect. I knew how to say amen at the right time. I knew how to come in and put a smile on when, man, you mad at your sister, y'all fighting on the way over there, say amen. Back then, in the days, we didn't have Nintendo Switches and all that. We just played with rocks and dirt. And can I tell you the awesomest, awesomest, that's horrible English, the greatest uh, man, science experiment you can do. This is extra tonight. Me and my twin sister, Greta, she looks just like me. Say amen right there. I'm just kidding. She's a pencil, man. She's a pretty girl. I'll never, I'll never forget we got up there at the parsonage and man, me and my twin sister she was a tomboy back in the days we went out there underneath the parsonage and dug up some dirt brother Phil we dug kids y'all ready for this it's going to be awesome your parents are not going to like me after this grandmas and grandpas are spam not going to like me we dug up some dirt right there and man we found a big old earthworm me and my sister was very mischievous any of y'all mischievous yeah probably all the hands need to go up this is cool. Y'all ready for this? You got to tell your parents that you try at least once. Preacher, we got that earthworm. 
And it's all Greta, of course. I didn't have nothing to do with it. But man, she wrapped that thing up in a paper towel. We walked inside. We opened that paper towel up. Mom and Dad left. Bad idea. They left us there preaching. And then we took that paper towel out, and there was that blessed earthworm. Just sitting there trying to swarm around. Y'all ready? Here's the best part. This is the coolest part. Stuck it in the microwave. <laughs> Talking about the greatest thing in the world. We were sitting there at the little microwave. Doo. That's awesome. That's great. Hopefully he went to heaven. Praise God. Because we took him out of his misery. Do not try that at home. Say Amen conviction set in my heart as a mischievous man you say Jeff you don't, you don't know what's going on you don't know what I've done in my life can I remind you tonight it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter what you thought of just a while ago it doesn't matter what you said a while ago it doesn't matter about the text message you sent that best friend that you think you hid from somebody can I say there's a God that loves you there's a God that died on the cross for your sins I wonder tonight how many alcoholics how many drug heads we got how many divorce homes we would have in here tonight had it not been for a God that loved us and cared for us and saved our soul by the grace of God I'm trying to tell you about the spirit of God Noah said that same spirit won't always be here that Wednesday night my dad was tearing her up boy and the Holy Ghost of God told me I was sitting about right, right where you were he said, Jeff, tonight is your last night. 16 years old. You know what I heard a lot preaching when I was a youth pastor? Those kids look at me and say, Jeff, I got, I got to, I'm 30 to get things right with God. Jeff, I got to, I'm not even 21 yet. Jeff, maybe once I turn 21, and can I say this, it's too late then. They're going to get a hold of every single thing this world has to offer. And it's going to destroy their life. They've come to me, Jeff, man, Jeff, man, I just got a little longer. Jeff, I, I still got some time left. I'm on, you say tonight, I'm only 10, I'm only 5, I'm only 7. Jeff, I got the rest of my life. I told Brother Dennis sitting in the motel a while ago, I said, Dennis, wouldn't it be fantastic? Man, we on the way to church tonight, or right in the middle of church, the church is almost over. And that last little kid gets saved somewhere in Argentina or Antarctica or Canada or, or wherever that little last kid gets in. And all of a sudden, Gabriel wets his lips and, and he blows the trumpet. Can I say, I use some of y'all tonight, y'all look scared to death. And can I say, I'm glad you do. Because the fact of the reality is, if you die without the Spirit of God, if you die without God, you're not going to get another opportunity. If God was to come back, gosh, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. If you was to die tonight, and man, God was to split the heavens open. I wonder how many tonight would be raptured out all because you thank you man I'm a preacher's kid I'm supposed to have it can I say there's a lot of preacher kids in hell tonight there's a lot of 10 11 12 year olds in hell tonight who thought they had it honey tonight if I didn't know if I knew God I would run to somebody tonight and say dear God show me the word of God I'm thankful for the spirit of God <laughs> those kids would always tell me Jeff, I got forever. Preacher Doug, you know, Miss, Mr. Butcher and Debbie Huff. Jeff, I'm in college. I got, I'm, I'm good. There's a man in my church, him and his dear wife. Sweet people. That girl, she come up here one time, Tiffany and Alicia. We all come up here and got bombed out by them cicadas that time. Those things are wicked, praise God. Thank God South Carolina don't have them things. But man, well, I'll never forget... It was on Thursday, Friday morning. My dad got a phone call. She was probably 19, 18, 19, 20 at the time. She went to meet her dad to give her some money for college. At a little store, supposed to meet somewhere else. He said, Jeff, why are you saying this? i tell you why. She reached over there and got the money and she jetted across about 5 o'clock in the morning to North Greenville University. Crossed over Highway 25. Car come around the bend hit the back of her car and whiplashed her neck and she went out into eternity. Thank God she had the testimony 
of being saved. Kids, I wonder tonight, God forbid, what if we didn't make it home? What if you didn't get to go see mama? What if you didn't get to go see daddy tonight? What if tonight, God forbid, what if something would happen to us on our way home? And God has given you this last chance. God's given you this last time. You know why it's so quiet right now? Number one, you listen, but number two, the Holy Ghost is working on somebody. You know why I take it so serious? Because there'll be kids tonight that won't be here next year. That won't be here next week. Another girl, they're local. I'm really good friends with a pastor up there. Her daughter's in middle school. Now listen, this middle school. How many of you middle school tonight? How many middle schoolers have got? Listen, this kids, middle school. They say that a little seventh, seventh, sixth, and seventh grader, a preacher at a party. And Brother Lawrence, they say that those two little girls started drinking alcohol. What, 12, 13, 14 years old? Said they got in a car with a teenage boy. He promised he'd take them home. Well, the Lord said down there in Pickens, man, it's real curvy and all that good stuff. Down 183, preacher on the backside near Dacusville. He said that teenage boy ran across the line because he was drunk and hit a tree. And all three of them went out into eternity. I don't know if they were saved. That girl that I, that family that I come in contact with, they didn't know she was saved. Jeff, I got the rest of my life. Tonight could be our very last night here on this earth. Can I say tonight, if your heart's just a pounding a little bit, some of you I can tell, Holy Ghost is already working on I'm glad for that. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Say, Jeff, what, what happens? I'll read you this. I knew I wasn't going to get far. Look at Revelation chapter number 9. You don't, you don't got to turn there. Take a little while. Say, Jeff, what happens? If I get left behind. Here's what happened in Revelation chapter number 9. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Jump down to verse number 6. And in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Why is that so important? People will try to kill themselves. Because the Spirit of God's gone. And we're gone. I'm gone. Praise God. I'm out of here. You'll be left behind. Daddy, tonight, you worried in your soul. You're scared. You're upset. Can I say I'm glad? Because I want you to know this thing is real. This thing's meant, them teenagers, they come to me with some bogus stuff, preacher. They come to me one time and said, hey, my science teacher said, God, it's not even a thing. It's a figment of her imagination. I said, you can tell her this and tell her I said so and put 14 exclamation points behind it. She can be left behind and figure out on her own. But there is a God. There is a spirit of God. The man, they, they, they've dumbed down our God. They've dumbed down society and salvation and all these things. Listen, all because your science teacher says there's not a God. Listen, that doesn't mean they're right. You say, Jeff, how do you know there's a God? How do you know the spirit of God exists? I tell you how I know. The what I'm feeling on the inside. It's not produced by a devil. What I feel running through my bones tonight. It's not produced by any man thing can do. It is the Spirit of God. It is God. It's Jesus and the Holy Ghost all together. Kids, I wonder tonight, if this was your last night, are you in or are you out? Sis, come on. I got 18 more points to preach. But I know when the Holy Ghost says, be quiet. I want you to get in your brain this. Just play with it, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. I want you to think about this. This wild preacher man, Noah, probably had a full gray beard. Say amen. I'm getting there. 
Brother Jordan, his working and working and laboring and laboring. Man, all those times preaching the word of God. You got to remember, it hadn't rained. It's dry. Some of you tonight looking at me say, man, you are crazy. You're wasting your time, Jeff. Why'd you drive up here this weekend? I tell you why. Because there's going to come a night, there's going to come a morning, there's going to come a day when God has given you every opportunity to accept Him. And you keep saying no. Man, the Holy Ghost, I'm glad the Holy Ghost keeps coming back. I've been doing a lot of studying about the Word again in the Bible, the ministry of again. Oh man, on time and 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 God just keeps coming back. Can I say, Brother Jordan, I'm very thankful that Tuesday night, man, I got down and I wanted to go. I wanted to go, but man, I got scared. I told myself, man, if I can just make it to Wednesday night service. Preacher, if I can just make it. Boy, I feel God in here. Brother Dennis, if I can just make it one more service. Can I say God could have said, nope. No more, big boy. Sorry, Jeff, I, I, I can't, can't do it. Brother Lawrence, sorry, sorry, Jeff, uh, you had your opportunity. But can I say, whoo, man, all day I was working that day and I walked in the house of God as a 16-year-old preacher's kid lost, going to hell. I was just as worse as a drunk. I was just as worse as a dope head. I was lost on my way to hell. But thank God for the Spirit of God. Thank God that God come again. Thank God God said, hey boy, I'm going to give you good God Almighty. I'm glad we serve a God that is faithful to give us time after time after time again. But tonight could be the last chance you got. Could you imagine I looked in that big old ark and man, a lot of that stuff was crazy. But one thing I really paid attention to, Brother Lawrence, you walk up second, third level where it was, there's this gigantic door. It was a whole lot bigger than me, and I'm a pretty big dude. Can I say, I started looking at that thing, and man, my heart, I about wanted to start preaching right there, right at that door. Can I say, it doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter how, how, how smart you think you are. It doesn't have, matter how much money. Man, they had them props on that thing. And man, I could just picture thousands and thousands and thousands of people getting saved. Going into the ark. Going in. Can I say tonight, I'm just, honey, if I was to die tonight and die of a massive heart attack and y'all was to man, tell my mom and daddy, can I say, you don't got to worry about where I'm going. I'll never feel the flames of hell. I'll never see the devil. I'll never see the demons of hell. You say, Jeff, why? because the Spirit of God come by me that night could you imagine Noah and his family went on the ark could you imagine people saying Noah told you so you know what the world tells us Christian you're wasting your time young person you're wasting your time Mom and daddy, you're wasting your time. That Jesus, that God stuff, that's not real. Could you imagine people? Man, Brother Noah, I believe he was a praying godly man. I believe when Brother Noah went into the ark, the Bible says this, Noah didn't shut the door. An, an elephant didn't grab the pull string and shut the door. It said, and God shut the door. Time after time, all humanity, kids and grandkids and mamas and daddies and nieces and nephews had time to get in the ark. There was plenty of opportunities, Lord, to walk in the grace of God, to get in the ark. But they waited too late. Time's up. I could see his mamas and daddies was on the outside. Noah, you're crazy. I believe off in the distance. I believe a little cloud started rumbling. I believe they started looking out as Brother Noah. I believe with all my heart, he was on his knees begging, God, please give that door one more time. God, I know, just give him one more time. God, please, just give him one more chance. But God was done with mankind. 
God is, you say, Jeff, we serve a loving God. And can I say we do? But if you reject God, you say no to Calvary. You say no to God. You say no to the Spirit of God. God has no other place to put you. To put you in hell. I see it. Do you see it? We're outside the ark. We're left behind. We're thinking, man, this guy's crazy. All of a sudden, a raindrop. All of a sudden, man, two raindrops. It ain't raining forever. All of a sudden, guess what? The fountains of the deep broke up. And all those people, it didn't matter what they thought. It didn't matter. It's too late. No more time. The preacher I could see as the water started trickling up the ankles. I can see grandmas and grandpas running the ark. Hey! Noah! Woo! Hey, Noah, it's raining now. Hey! Woo! I get it, Noah. No, I get it. I get it. I see mamas and daddies bringing their babies. Hey, Noah! 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 Listen, I know I mocked you. I know I made a lot of it. Noah, I know, I, Lord, I told you crazy. But Noah, listen, it's water's rising, Noah. Noah, please. Noah, please. Noah, Noah, I understand now. I see kids your age. Do you see it? Water's rising to the knees. Kids are jumping up. Hey, hey, Noah, listen. I know mom and daddy didn't really tell me a lot about it, but Noah, it's raining. I see you, Ian. Noah, please, just one more time. Noah, please, just one more time. Open the door, Noah. Noah, I get it. Let me say this tonight. If it was up to Noah, he would open the door. But guess what? It wasn't up to Noah. Do you see it? The water's rising. Preach, I believe with all my heart, grandparents, Brother Jordan, lifting their babies. Noah, please, you don't got to save me, Noah. Noah, please. Noah, Noah, Noah. Here's little Johnny. Please, please, Noah, save him. Please, Noah, do it. It's too late. Can I say this? You say, Jeff, that's crazy. That's not real. When I say this, I mean it with all respect. You're going to be left behind and you will find out for yourself that the judgment of God is coming. Mamas and daddies taking their preacher their last breath underneath the water. Do you see it? The water's rising up. Kids are floating around everywhere. Mamas and daddies are floating around everywhere. Noah, Noah, I know. I, Noah, I understand. Noah, Noah. Took their last breath. They're sunk. Bodies around everywhere. But you know who was saved? Noah. And his family, I read you this and I'm done. Preacher, you come give the invitation as you see fit. Every morning, day by day, I gave the message all the way. Judgment is coming for all who exist. Please don't delay. And please don't resist. I preached and worked every day on the ark. Passers-by would not be a part. They laughed, they mocked, they sometimes yelled. But I knew the love of God would prevail. I watched them say no time after time to turn away to tell God another line. My heart was burdened for their soul because I knew the Lord had full control. Then the day came, God told me so. It was time for me and my family to go. Come in the ark, I heard God say. Me and my family went that way. With tears of sorrow running down my face, the door of the ark shut in place. No more to enter, the people chose their way. It was too late, too late. I heard them say, 
If tonight's our last night on this earth, some of you, I can tell in your hearts and your faces, you don't have Jesus. I'd get in before it's too late. Heads bowed and eyes closed. We're all standing. Preacher, you come. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.